guys, welcome to my Twitch stream. I think, is this thing on? Okay, do you hear me? All right, sorry I'm a little later than I meant to be. I was trying to do this uh, earlier at about six this evening, but I ran into some technical difficulties, as in user error that I completely forgot how to do all this because it's been so long. Anyways, I am here and I'm excited to hang out with you guys for a little bit and show you a new piece I'm working on and maybe answer some questions for you guys. So, hopefully you are seeing this. So let me grab the chat. Okay, looks like the chat is on. And let's make sure um, I can see. Okay, cool. It looks like I am there on Twitch. Looks like I'm appearing there, hopefully. You guys let me know if it's uh, choppy or anything. I just got um, a new internet setup, so this is my first time trying it with this as well. So I'm hoping that it's not gonna cause us any problems. This is a little bit of a retest run today. Okay, hello, a couple of you guys are here already. You're so fast, that's awesome. So hello, I see Lexi. Hi Lexi, good to see you again. And Galaxy Crescent, which always makes me think of crescent rolls, even though I know that's not what you intend. <laughs> I'm hungry. All right, I'm so glad to have you guys here. Nothing choppy. Okay, but this is probably even better because I got uh, a, one of those new Google uh, routers and it looks very futuristic. So I assume it works better than my old one that I used to have. Okay, I look like I'm sort of like far away from the camera. So let's see if, I mean, I don't need to be like up close in HD or anything, but that's a little better. There we go, there I am. Ah, all right, cool. How's that? Good, all right, I like that better. All right, let's get started. And so you guys have some stuff for me to show you. That wasn't proper English. <laughs> okay, I'm out of practice. Anyways, you guys, some of you have seen this sketch. Um, this is a commission I'm doing. Um, for he happens to be an artist himself which is always a bit intimidating but I really excited he had some great references for me and he really wanted this uh, snow queen that's like a little bit Elsa but not Elsa which I love and he had some gorgeous um, Viking women um, Nordic queen kind of um, inspirations and we actually looked at a lot of jewelry and crowns and it was really cool we did some um kind of historic research and also um uh from that tv show called vikings which has really great powerful women and costumes which i'm all about i've only seen one episode but i might watch some more of it because i really loved all the photos and costumes that i used for reference for this um and um, I looked at some really interesting um, face models and um, I collected kind of like a bunch of different faces I liked. Um, but one particular model that I'm kind of like obsessed with right now, um, her name is Abby Lee Kershaw, I think Kershaw, yeah. Um, she has these just incredible cheekbones and this almost like, like gaunt haunting look and I really just love her face. So look her up. Um, she has an Instagram too. And um, if you saw Mad Max Fury Road, she was one of the brides. She was like the white blonde one and she has like a little gap in her teeth. I don't know. She's just like my ideal like face, like really pretty, but just a little bit like alien. I just really dig that look. So that is sort of the face model that I used for this particular face. And I'm kind of trying to challenge myself to do a little bit of a different face because sometimes I feel like oh, okay all of my characters sort of look the same and I was like no I want a little bit more of a different personality and still my style but um, I'm gonna challenge myself to do a little bit um, vary my characters a little bit with different traits so that's kind of my next goal that I'm going for especially this one which will be kind of uh, maybe even a little bit more of a mature face I really just like I don't know I love a cheekbone and when you've got all that like young baby fat you don't have those amazing cheekbones like that so that's what I'm going to embrace as I enter my late 30s mid mid 30s mid 30s okay anyways uh thank you guys for joining me uh, yes Lexi says I was thinking Viking Elsa okay so that's perfect so my intention is coming through which is always exciting when people go 
Oh, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not getting that. That's not a good sign. Well, all right. So I have, so this is my sketch that I have transferred and um, very much like my um, uh, high priestess piece, I intend on doing a pretty complicated masking technique on the bottom here, if you guys can kind of see. I have this pattern that's very, very kind of Frozen inspired. I looked at a lot of uh, Frozen concept art, actually. I'll show you guys this design a little bit more. This painting is so big, it actually, whoa, doesn't fit on my workspace. Uh, so this is a different challenge for me. But yeah, so I designed this pretty cool pattern that like kind of feels like an ice palace or something, um, but I still wanted it to be kind of like abstract and ambiguous. So I'm going to attempt to mask that and um, paint, you know, the dress color and everything over it. So I'm not gonna show that today because it's like super tedious. Um, and it'll just be like watching me curse at a like masking tape for several hours. But that I might, uh, I'll show you guys like the peeling process, which is the best part later when we get to that. So um, originally uh, my commissioner, Sean, he wanted to do an even bigger painting. He wanted to do um, something like 24 by 36, just huge. And I was like, well, like I don't, typically like I don't do paintings that big and I was like well for my time and stuff I'm gonna have to like charge you and I can't even work like in my little um, video area I'd have to set up my stand-up easel and everything so this is pretty much like the maximum size that I'm gonna get um on my desk here and my plan is today uh, oh my god I just messed up my chair <laughs> hold on I hit the ejection the ejection seat what the heck Come on, there we go. All right, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I just got a new chair that's supposed to be better and it tried to kill me. Okay, which one's higher? There's three levers down here. Okay, there, okay. <laughs> I, we're good guys, we're good. Okay, um, so my uh, plan today while I paint on this is I'm actually gonna tilt her up a little bit and hopefully you guys can still see um, yeah, because it's a little easier for me because I can't like lay my body flat over the desk. So yeah, actually that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that actually looks pretty good for you guys. Okay, uh, a couple more of you have joined us. Hello, who have I got? I've got, oh my gosh, Matthew Beckett. What's up? Hey, nice to see you here. I'm not going to like embarrass you by asking a bunch of art questions to you, but it's super awesome to have you here. I hope you guys are doing well and keeping busy and also getting some R&R &R once in a while. I know you guys kind of workaholics over there yourselves. Um, I've got Midnight Doll is back. Hello, Midnight Doll. Welcome. Hello. Yes, Daenerys, Mother of Dragons. So you just got here um, and definitely, definitely Daenerys inspired. Um, but as I told my uh, little buddies that were here earlier, um, this is a commission piece for a Snow Queen inspired by um, Elsa, but not Elsa, and also um, Nordic and Viking kind of um, queens. So, so not Daenerys, um, but definitely some of her influence in there for sure, because I love her and I also love white, wild hair. So definitely an inspiration as well. Um, Game of Thrones... If you guys are not into it, you still have uh, like a week to watch all of them before the, the last and final season comes out, which I highly recommend. Uh, definitely, definitely a great program. Okay, so anyways, yeah. So I've got um, most of my, my transfer went fairly well. And again, for this size piece, I actually had to uh, print out three uh, 11 by 17 sheets of paper and tape them all together to get the full transfer on here because it's so big. So that was kind of fun. I also make sure it like lines up perfectly and that it's perfectly centered. So you always want to double check that because I have had a couple of transfer nightmares where everything was like skewed a little bit because I didn't tape the drawing down perfectly. So spend that extra 10 or 15 minutes to align your drawing if you do transferring like I do. Um, also, if I hadn't mentioned it before, 
I have probably in the last year or two, maybe, maybe less, um, I've switched over to using um, blue Sorol. And I like the story, I probably already told it, but like I sent my husband to the art store because he was going to get a coffee. He's like, you need anything from the art store? I'm like, yeah, I need some more Sorol transfer paper. And I always used to use the graphite. That's what I've used for years. And I was like, you know, I don't know. Why would I try any of the other ones? This works. Um, but I was always like not like oh, like perfectly happy with it. It was very smudgy and messy and it would leave gray smears that were very hard to take off. So anyway, husband goes there, doesn't know that there's different kinds of this, and he just buys the first one that uh, he sees. And it happened to be the blue, non-photographic blue, which if you guys are familiar with comics, um, I don't, I usually have one around here. Actually, I used to use them, um, but they sell what they call um, non-photo blue pencils. And basically it's a pencil you can use that isn't gonna be picked up by a camera or a scanner. So it's kind of great if you are a comic artist that has someone else do your inking, because even if the little bit of the, the non-photo blue pencil shows after the inking, it's not gonna show up in the scan. So it's kind of a little magic tool, right? So same thing with this, which is great if I'm gonna scan or have my painting photographed and I really don't want that underdrawing in there. I mean, usually I don't have much of it left anyways but um, it's kind of just a nice option to have if you want to be more clean. And the other great perk I discovered from this stuff is it's super, super easy to take off. You can use um, even like a little wet um, paper towel or um, Q-tip and just wipe it right off, like no big deal. Like um, eraser works too, but actually just getting it a little bit wet i found is the perfect way to take it off. And that's kind of great when you're painting because you can just blend the um, transfer lines into your paint. So it's awesome and it's like my favorite thing ever. So my husband's mistake ended up being a, a very happy accident as my hero Bob Ross would say. All right, so anyway, um, I'm pretty happy with this transfer actually because the other thing that sometimes happens to me is I will transfer the face and I'll somehow just really lose the personality and the, the energy of the drawing. And I try to, um, when I'm doing a transfer, uh, actually think with my drawing brain, you know, not just like an autopilot trace. I try to think about redrawing, um, so to speak, because it really helps get a little bit more of your um, uh, energy as you in a kind of an abstract way of putting it into the transfer and you don't get that like you know like when you're a kid and you like trace over like a magazine or something and it or you know it just wouldn't feel like the picture um so yeah that's just something that i kind of keep in mind um and this one in particular like i said pretty happy with it uh pretty happy with the symmetry and the eyes the intensity of the eyes came through which i usually always lose that and i spend the majority of my painting hours trying to get the character to look at me the way that I intended without one eye going up and one down. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so you guys are um, chatting about uh, the the photo blue stuff. Yeah, definitely recommend trying that. It's pretty great. Um, yeah, you guys are talking about, okay, Game of Thrones. Hello, yay. <laughs> yeah, good, good to see you guys. Um, Matthew, feel free to tell people who you are. I don't want to like out you if you don't, if you don't want to tell people, but, um, yeah, Matthew knows a thing or two about art and art stuff too. So maybe he'll share some, any insight that he wants to give me today. Cause I'm open to that as well. All right. So, uh, I also today, um, I opened up my questions to our, um, lovely people over on Instagram that may or may not be able to join us on the stream today. So I'm going to try, this looks like I got a few questions already, um, to include them too if we can. We'll see how good I am at multitasking today because it's always uh, interesting when you're trying to paint. All right, so to start, I think um, I usually like to um, do my blocking as I like to call it. So I like to kind of block in my flat colors and then build on top of that. So 
Um, some of you guys know if you paint with oils or something that stays wet, it's always going to be like super blendable and you can do a lot of the blending um, right away. Um, however, I work with acrylics as you guys know, so mine is a little bit like more like doing layers on layers on layers instead of mixing it at once. I do a little bit of wet into wet blending, um, but for the most part, it's a lot of just really light layers and they get sort of thinner and more translucent as I get closer to the finish. So it's kind of an interesting process actually. And sometimes that's frustrating and sometimes it's a, it's a good perk. Um, dee dee dee. <laughs> Uh, Midnight Doll says, have you caught up to RuPaul's Drag Race season 11? Who's your top three? Yes, I am completely caught up. Always looking forward to a new episode. And my top three are Miss Vanjie. I love Miss Vanjie. I just, I, she can do no wrong by me. I just find her so adorable. Every single time I see her, I just want to squeeze her. And plus she just looks so beautiful. Like I love her makeup that she does and her personality and her humor and she's really stepped it up i'm i hope that she mixes up her outfits maybe a little bit more um because i really see her as possibly top three um brooklyn heights because i gotta gotta love got love for my ballerina home girl i i was she came out on point and i'm like okay i'm done you're amazing she's just gorgeous i love her fashion like her fashion is like, I just, she's kind of like, she gives me like a little bit detox at times, but like, I don't know. She definitely like has her own thing. And I, I like, I like her a lot. And then I'm probably torn between, I, and I also like uh, Evie Oddly. Evie Oddly was kind of one of my favorites um, from the promos. And I was like, I can't wait to see what she does. Uh, because I, I'm actually like, I'm a huge Dragula fan. So I really love alternative kind of drag which could be like gothy or horror or like a little bit of like weirdness mixed in so I think she really brings that to the table I'd like to see her like maybe step up her um uh like um technical like costume making like sometimes it's a little bit um like crafty maybe but I don't know I kind of like that about it too so I'd probably have to say them, even though I do see some really awesome looks from Plastique. I think Plastique has been like kind of a, like a surprising queen for me because I thought, oh, she's probably all look. I mean, she's gorgeous, but I don't know. I think she's been doing great and she's really funny. And um, I don't know, I enjoy quite a few of them. I, I've never like, I've seen some people become kind of jaded about the show now and they're like, everybody's boring. And I'm like, what <laughs> i'm watching a different show like i don't know i'm just happy to have it it's it's the highlight of my week and brings me like joy to watch and so i'm just always gonna love me some drag race uh yeah so who's your your top i kind of went off uh on that, on that yeah uh it's a midnight doll says did you know about the apparent love blooming on set with Brooklyn and Vanjie? Yes, I, I saw that. I was like, that's cute. Then I would definitely see like them two being in the top two and like lip syncing against each other. That could be like a good drama, right? <laughs> we'll have to see if that happens. I could see them going really far. I, I don't know. We'll just have to see. It depends on the challenge, right? It's a good show. If you guys aren't watching it, get into it. <laughs> Oh, okay. You guys are, you guys are chatty. So I'll try to keep up with you guys, but <laughs> okay. So I think Matthew, so Matthew, he, he did share with us. So I guess I could share. So he is married to Jasmine Beckett Griffith, who is amazing. So I'll try not to fangirl too hard while he's here, but please tell her I say hello. Um, you guys, if I know you all know who she is, so I don't have to even tell you, but, um, she is a master artist and my fellow Wonderground Disney artist, which is always like kind of like surreal to me because I remember when they first like um, offered me a spot at Wonderground. I'm like, oh my God, Jasmine shows that shows there. That's like a big deal. <laughs> Anyways, she's really sweet. I've only gotten to meet her once uh, years ago at um, Spectrum at uh, Spectrum Fantastic Art Live. 
and she was super sweet in person and she was funny I remember when I met her I, sh I was like so you know like how do you create so much like because she just like turns out work and she's like well sometimes I kind of just like zone out and I forget to eat and Matthew has to like put food next to me and I'm like you are just like an art machine anyways I, ho I hope she's doing well I have to see what she's working on next uh yeah so <laughs> I'm gonna let's see okay I have a couple questions from people okay so I have one from Brian wait Bri Bria okay Bria Mo 93 how did you start your own business? Thank you, Briamo. I'm. I hope. I don't know if I'm saying your name right. There's no spaces, so I can never like tell, like how how it's meant to be pronounced. So I like. I've I've kind of like talked about this before. Um, <laughs> Matthew says I made sure that she had food today. Good. Well, thank God. I mean, we we need her. We need her to lead us artists. <laughs> so she needs to eat. I wish my husband would bring me food. He'll, he'll stick his head in here any minute and be like, so, what's for dinner? And I'll be like, I don't know. What are you making or ordering? Bring it to me right now because I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so my Instagram question is, how, was I, how did I start my business? And it was a very gradual process. Um, I actually didn't set out to start a business per se. Um, most of you guys kind of know a little bit about my history with YouTube and things. And I had just finished art school, completely clueless about what to do next. Um, they did not really prepare us for that part of it. Um, and I was working two jobs and trying to paint nights, which was stressful. And I took my little digital Canon from 2008 <laughs> to tell you about the technology and I duct taped it on a hanger, a clothes hanger, and I taped that to my tripod and I put it on my desk and I made my first monopod like this one that you guys can actually see right here. And I made a little video and put it on YouTube and I was like, okay, I, that's kind of fun. Like I'm going to keep doing that. Um, and I started getting people watching it and like then I would get little messages be like hey can I buy that like is that for sale and I was like oh like actually I mean Matthew could probably tell you I believe Jasmine started out somewhat similar um she was uh, became pretty well known on eBay I believe that's when I think I first saw her stuff as uh, so she was kind of just doing these little paintings and putting them on eBay and pretty soon it was like oh my gosh I'm getting some attention on this so it's always sort of organic when you first start because I really was just trying to feel out what I liked about art, why I wanted to do it, what it, what facet of art. I kind of, my degree is in illustration. So I thought, oh yeah, illustration, that's what I'm gonna do, like for magazines or something. But I, I don't know, there was aspects of that that didn't like appeal to me as much and I had of course, at the time, other artists' influences, like Jasmine, for example, actually, and Camilla Dierico, who I was um, very, like, inspired by her at the time, and I'm like, hey, she's doing her own thing, she's doing comics, uh, she's doing fine art, she was kind of early starting her fine art stuff at the time, and I was like, they're, like, doing their own thing, and doing what, like, inspires them. So I found that very appealing, but I had no idea like how to go from an art school portfolio of like figure drawings to that. So it was really just kind of experimental, honestly. Um, and from there, my mom, my parents were always very supportive of me, even though I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. My mom's like, well, I think you need to like really get out there and see what the public likes and thinks. And I was like, oh, I don't like that part. So she's a very outgoing person. So she kind of like got me going there. And so we set up some little like tables at like art craft shows, like kind of hokey stuff. And I would, I would get people's opinions and I would sell a couple of things usually. Um, and then I kind of was like, okay, well that worked well. So I'm going to, you know, do this next time. And then my mom's like, well, maybe we should get some prints done. Cause at first I was just taking paintings, like little paintings on wood and things. Um, and then I was like, okay, what else can we do? Um, 
uh, buttons or postcards or kind of like that. And I, at the same time, I was still growing on YouTube and I was doing my Etsy store, which I started to sell a few things there. And I still, I still had my day job, jobs, because <laughs> in San Francisco, I still needed those too. So I probably, I'm trying to think exactly, because 2009, I think I went fully like supporting myself with my art business in about 2012. 2011, 2012, I was kind of shifting into being able to actually pay my bills just doing art. Um, so yeah, I just kept at it, honestly. Um, I can go into more detail. I have talked more about this on other videos that I've done and I'm still kind of trying to figure out if there's potential to do a class kind of to help people get started. Um, the thing that has kind of like uh, shorted me out on the business class and then, you know, maybe we can talk about this since some of you guys are here. Um, is that technology and stuff has changed so rapidly that a lot of the things that I did to get started are completely like obsolete. So I'm like, uh, okay, well, I'm not gonna teach you guys to do that because that doesn't even exist anymore. So I kind of need to research and develop and find some new ways even for myself to kind of stay relevant and and everything. So we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely go into that. Hopefully that answers your question, Brimo. Brimo. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Matt, Matt says, uh, yeah, eBay all at once. It's so crazy, right? And he also says, oh, we met Camilla last week. Oh, you did? Was that at Emerald City Comic Con? Were you guys at that one or was it uh, something else? Because I know there was that con going on. Yeah. I, Lexi says, I love Camilla's fuzzy bees. Oh my God, they're so cute. I support her on Patreon because like, I just, I love her stuff. So, okay, she's gonna like be embarrassed by this probably, but I, like one of the main reasons that I support uh, Camilla's, well, no, I love her, no, don't get me wrong, but she writes erotic fan fiction about The Walking Dead, okay? And you have to subscribe to her Patreon to get it. And her and I have this thing that we share that we both were like, big shippers of Daryl and Beth, like R.I.P. Beth. But anyways, we were both like into this. And she's like, I write a fan fiction on this. I'm like, you don't. Oh my God. Anyway, it's good. So pick it up. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Oh, Lexi says, I might try eBay. Yeah, you know, um, actually Matthew can weigh in on this probably because I, I've sold like a couple of things on eBay. Does So does is Jasmine still, is eBay still like a big um, selling source for her because I always kind of wonder like if things have kind of shifted now she has her own store and um, lots of galleries that she works with so I'd be curious if that's kind of stayed constant or if she's like kind of shifted I mean now her name is like so well known I, I would think people kind of know how to track her down but it's interesting sometimes like your original like OG place that you come from is always like this sort of pure thing like um, Etsy, for example, like I started out on Etsy, um, I still on Etsy and I've thought about, oh, you know, I could launch my own like store, like leilottiejoystore.com or something. Um, but honestly, I'm kind of like embedded in that Etsy community and people sort of know that's where my store is. And I mean, they make it really easy and they have like a great shipping service. Oops, I got too much water in there. Ah, it's all separating. Um, and yeah, so for me, it kind of works. I could come up with a custom domain probably and simplify that. But now it's like, hey, I like I like that platform for selling. Um, I have like, I think I, I hit 4,000 sales recently. Yay, 4,000 packages, guys. I hand packed all those with a little help sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's some street cred when you've got like good reviews and everything. So I'm like, I'm not really like keen at this point to to leave that i it's kind of like my stone my <laughs> home store if you will yeah okay so anyways i didn't really talk about this but you're like why why is her face color like that that exact foundation color on edward scissor hands where she's like darn this stuff <laughs> does anyone understand that reference um yeah so the reason is is because my palette for this piece is very 
um, wintry and cool and I'm gonna have some navies, navy colors and blues and white. So I really want a cool skin tone that has a lot of violet and actually gray in it. Um, but this is just kind of my base color. So just like drag makeup, you can do base color. Then you go in with your highlights and contours. So I feel like my camera is not doing this color justice. It's actually like a really pretty, very, very, very pale peach lavender with just like a little, little hint of like a grayness to it, which I think is just kind of cool. It makes her feel cold somehow. Um, yeah, anyways, so that's kind of what I'm laying in here. Okay. Uh, okay, so Matt Matt clarified for us. So for, for Jasmine, eBay is secondary. Now it's galleries and her personal website. Yeah, I mean, that kind of makes sense. But I'm glad she still does it, though. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of like, like where she, like, comes from. And there's certain people that just know that her stuff is there. But, yeah, she's definitely kind of like gallery scene is, is really where you go for that. And her own website with all her good stuff. She has so many products. I'm always like, oh my God. Like, look at this new product. Look at this new product. It's amazing. She's like a prime example. I know, I'm just like gushing over her. But like, she's such a prime example of like multiple revenue streams. And I think it's like really the way to do it if you're gonna be a fine artist per se. Because everyone's always like, there's no money in fine artists. The little things add up. You know, as you guys know, it's like, hey, those little checks come from Disney, those royalties um, from your puzzles or your sculptures or your jewelry line or whatever. And it's like, hey, all of those little micro transactions really pay your bills. So and then plus the paintings, of course, but you only have to do one painting and then it can be all these different products and prints and everything. So, I mean, I make, uh, you know, as another sort of business insight, most of my income from small prints they like I sell a lot of small prints so those really you add up to more than the painting most of the time so the prints is just a great like affordable way for people to to own your artwork and you only have to do the one painting so that's pretty great actually um so hello hello black sky nice to have you here I'm so glad you could join us do you still have Art New Vogue though? Uh, like my cha my YouTube channel? I still have it, of course, but I've just been, um, you know, I could talk about my last uh, job that I was on for Mattel. Um, and honestly, I've just been uh, just not able to make any paintings or videos for a long time. So I'm gonna try to get back to it. Or like I kind of want to do is shift a lot more of my videos towards this Twitch kind of thing and live stream and then post those videos like a paint along onto my channel because it's really kind of a great way to like do double duty if you will because a lot of times the things that like are really time consuming for me is just like editing videos I mean usually most of my Art Nouveau videos take a day or two just to edit and lately I've been so busy which is great um, that I haven't been able to just like donate that time to it as much um, so I don't know things are always adapting But I don't I definitely don't want to abandon my YouTube channel completely even though viewership hasn't been That great probably because I'm just not posting as much. So we'll see, you know, this is a year of um, kind of Shifting my goals and seeing where I really want to put that that effort because I love I love making videos and it's a big part of my job um, so I'm always kind of trying to figure out the best way to continue to do that that's also efficient for my time, right? Because um, that's always the thing that's the most scarce and valuable is our time. And it's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually I'm helping an artist friend right now film her own class. Um, her name is Carla Ortiz, if you guys know her. She is an incredible, incredible artist. Um, she's working with Marvel right now. Uh, but she's teaching her techniques and I was um, actually modeling for her and helping her and I was like you know this is it's such a big undertaking to move into video media and, and shift 
um, what you do with your painting and do that like in a different uh, medium where you're explaining what you do and stuff. Uh, yeah. Hey, okay. Wow, there's a few of you guys. Hello, Name Shiny. Name Shiny, welcome. I don't think I've seen you here before, so I'm super happy to have you. Uh, if you guys if you guys have a question, you can always um, post it again, just in case I don't see it in the feed. Yeah, because I, I know <laughs> you guys are, I'm so glad you guys are here. Hello, Fusroa? Fus yeah, I know you've been here before and I always mess up your name. Fusroa. That sounds good. Halo. She, oh, who's Roa? I don't know if you're a boy or girl, but they say Carla Ortiz's work is so stunning. I know. <laughs> yeah. She's a friend of mine and she's like the sweetest, like most, I mean, non arrogant person ever. And she paints like a freaking Renaissance master painter. And I'm just like, <laughs> she's just so awesome. Um, yeah. So Lexi says, hey, Leilani, is it okay to post links? I wanted to post a link to a web comic with amazing art. I think I have links turned off right now because um, it was like, I had one person who was being spammy, so I just turned it off. But if you want, just write it out, like write the website and then write dot dot and then com or something that might work. Like just don't put it as like a link link if you could like do it that way. I don't know, I'll change that next time because I don't really think we need it, but I, I don't know how to, do the, the uh, setting right right at this time. Yeah, I'll figure it out for next time. Woo. I had one weird person in here one time and I was like, okay. I, and I don't know how to like ban someone, so I need to figure that out. Mm. Okay. All right, she's looking a little, a little blotchy, but that's okay because this is just the first layer. And we're gonna blend it in. We'll do several layers on top of this. Um, this is, oh, I love this board I got. This is from um, Cheap Joe's. You guys know about back? Let's see, it says on here. Yeah, Joe's Prime Extra Fine Art Board by Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. Oh my God, these are fantastic. They're all primed and ready to paint on. I don't have to gesso them or anything. They're beautiful. And this is actually, so it came like uh, raw. So whoops. <laughs> So it looked like this um, when I got it. There's the, uh, eh, there, it's upside down, but you guys. So it, come, it came like this, um, which you can paint on directly. You don't have to do anything to it if you don't want to, if you want a little bit of that kind of woodsiness to show through. Um, but I just did one flat layer of acrylic spray paint, white acrylic spray paint, and it gave me this amazing smoothness that's just a little little bit of tooth so not too slick so the paint like adheres really nicely to it so I'm kind of um, in love with that I always was um, like a long time advocate for the speedball or the Amsterdam panels but sometimes I find that they're almost too slippery like the paint just slips right off and it takes some effort to get it to actually adhere you know which would uh, sometimes kind of be Frustrating. So this is like, look at how smoothly that just kind of like goes on there when I have the right amount of paint in my brush. Um, yeah, it's really great. I love that application. Um, okay. Blend it. And this is kind of like a nice stage because I'm never too worried about perfection right now. But it's not the most probably interesting because it's always more fun when I'm actually painting details but since I'm just starting this we'll just try to block in as much as we can I like when I start to go into my Bob Ross voice you know just just do what you can don't worry about it just have fun with it you can always fix it later if it doesn't look perfect that's the great thing about painting you know God, I love that stuff. I loved him so much. He inspired me, he made me feel like I could do it. Even though you're never gonna do it as good as him. He made you feel like you could, and that's all that mattered. I also, oh my God, you guys, I just watched the um, Mr. Rogers documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Oh, have you guys seen that? It's so good. I used to watch him after school all the time. And it's just like, I don't know, he's so smart and just like, I really did not know 
how edgy like the topics were that he handled like um the jfk assassination and like the vietnam war and it was like you'd have to i mean i didn't wasn't watching it then right i'm not that old um but it was like oh i the puppets would be like you know everybody's talking about assassination what does that mean and they would like explain it to kids and like make it like not so scary i don't know it's amazing definitely recommend i think it's on hbo right now if you guys have that (laughs) um so okay yes uh midnight doll says bob ross is making a comeback with the bob ross challenge what is that i should probably know is that like when people actually try like to paint one of his paintings Please tell me that. I know he's making a comeback just like because he's like kind of like an icon and he's on like products and stuff and he's on Netflix. So you guys should go watch that. (laughs) Uh, Matthew says, I have to give props for traditional art. Yay. (laughs) Thanks. I know, right? It's just, I don't want the art form to get lost completely. Like I just spent, so I, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, if you guys want to know, but I just spent the last month doing digital... Um, background illustrations for Mattel for their uh, Barbie web series and I it was such a completely different way of working I just for me to shift gears into doing completely digital like 12 hours a day sometimes and my arms got really sore and I was having carpal tunnel and some other issues but I was like man I really just miss like getting my hands in paint again and like moving it around it's just such a different different feeling right (laughs) uh so matt says i once wrote a zombie story about bob ross where he wanted to eat me happy little brains i feel like even if he was a zombie he would like be really polite about it right like i just think i might want to eat your brains that's okay (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, so, okay. Oh, so, hello, Buddha Fox. What are you, what are you painting? A snow queen? Yeah, I am. So, a little recap, since you've just joined me. Um, This is a commission piece I'm doing for a client who wanted a snow queen with a hint of Elsa, but mostly um, Nordic Viking references and more of a... um, Uh, sort of mature take on it and so he sent me some really great references and this is sort of um, where I'm at with it I just did the transfer and um, I'm painting in her her skin tone now which is really kind of um, a cool um, cool not cool as a hip but cool skin tone Uh, do do um, uh, midnight doll says I'm actually pissed my dad told me the old rumor of him being part of the army and why he always wore sweaters to hide tattoos. <laughs> but it turned out to be false. Yeah, I, so she's talking about there was a rumor that um, Mr. Rogers always wore, wore sweaters because he was like all tatted from the war, but that was, that was uh, uh, an urban legend. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, West Side Rapper, hello. West Side is not Rapper, Reaper with a three. West Side Reaper, coming back to Disney soon or nah? Yes, I am. Um, in September. Don't have the exact dates yet, but I'm in talks with them. So I said I wanted to be near Halloween time this year. So I will be there um, at least two weekends of September. Uh, if not, all four. I'm not sure yet. Uh, Matthew, are you, you're in SoCal, right? No, I am in NorCal. Um, I'm in San Francisco area and born and raised NorCal and um, hopefully get to stay, but it's so freaking expensive. We're kind of like, hey, you know, we could move to like Sweden and like live really well. <laughs> so we'll see how much longer I can hang here, but I love it here. Um, I've uh, just like, I love to travel places, but I just always love to come home to Northern California. I know that's like what they all say, but I just, it's, we've got forests, we've got ocean, we've got cities, we've got incredible food. We've got a good art scene beautiful weather dig it I just I love it I'm from Sacramento area originally but I've been in the Bay Area for oh god more than 10 years so I'm kind of a local now um ye de- okay so Midnight Doll says Bob Ross challenge is actually just following his instructions to paint but some people do it 
by listening to his words instead of example. Okay, now that might be fun. I might have to try that. I'm not a landscape painter by any means, but that could be an interesting challenge. Creatures from Starlight, I made it! Welcome! I'm so glad you're here. Um, actually, I started a little late today, so you're totally fine. I was going to go earlier, but it took me a while to get all this set up and working properly. <laughs> um, so, oh, Olivia. Hello, Olivia Johnston. I thought you were drawing Sansa. Okay, lots of Game of Thrones references today because someone else thought I was doing um, um, Daenerys. But you know what? Like, I love Game of Thrones. I think I was probably watching it when I was doing the drawing. So definitely I want, and Game of Thrones is full of powerful women, right? Which is exactly what I want. So I, I definitely have some Queen of the North. We'll just call her Queen of the North for now until uh, we have a, a final title. But yeah, definitely some inspirations from that. Um, <laughs> uh, so West Side Reaper, Liara next. <laughs> As in from Mass Effect? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That'd be cool. I did. Have you, you've seen my um, Mass Effect uh, Afterlife Club poster, haven't you? Hopefully you've seen that. Because that, that I did the um, um, Asari strippers on there. It's great. It's actually one of my best sellers in my Etsy store right now. <laughs> oh, Woodside Reaper. Yeah, buddy. Melissa and I will be there. Oh, yay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I just realized who you are exactly because I didn't I didn't know what your screen name was, but it's so nice to see you again. I hope all is well. Please tell Melissa hi. Did you guys go see that Winnie the Pooh movie? The um because I think you said she loves Winnie the Pooh, the um uh Christopher Robin. Oh my god, it was so good. I saw it twice and cried. <laughs> uh, Matthew says, come to Orlando. We have Disney too. Actually, you know what? I was thinking about that. Because um, my husband and I, our friend is a big Disney guy. And he's like, we got to go like to Avatar land and everything. And I'm like, hmm, if I could somehow like make that a business trip at the same time. I bet like they have the, um, what do they call it? Like not the pop-up, the co-op. Is that what they call the Wonderground area in Florida? Like, because I know Jasmine's done signings there. They might let me do that. I bet they would. They wouldn't pay for anything. <laughs> As you know. But if I want to come on my own dime and do a signing, I bet they let me do that. I might, I might look into that. I think that would be really fun. <laughs> e, Olivia says, I'm so happy to see you're back on Twitch. You're such a joy. Like, Lonnie Joy. Aw. That's, my mom always says that. <laughs> it's so cute. My mom's like, that's why I named you that. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure when I was being a brat, you're like, I should have named you Leilani Brat. <laughs> mm. Speaking of that, I love rainbows, as you guys know. So I I used to dress up as Rainbow Bright as a kid. Maybe I'm slowly trying to turn into her now, I guess, with the blonde hair. But I have lots of older cousins that used to give me a hard time. And one of my cousins, his nickname for me was Rainbow Brat. He's like, Rainbow Brat. I'm like, it's Rainbow Bright. Don't call me that. Oh, God. Memories of childhood bullying. <laughs> getting distracted um so uh midnight doll says hey watch she becomes a white walker in the end you think so sansa predictions anyone have game of thrones predictions no one knows anything because um there's no book so it's all gonna be surprised to everybody um uh lexi i have returned welcome back uh, West Side Reaper. It is. She's next to me. We didn't, but want to. Uh, hello. Hello, Melissa. Nice to see you. Go see it. It's, that movie's on Netflix. You gotta watch it. It's so cute. Like, it's really, like, seriously, it's more aimed at, like, adults that loved Winnie the Pooh as kids than, like, kids. Because there was, like, kids in the theater when I saw it, and they were, like, really bored. And I was like, I love this. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, your experience is, like, with your toys and imagination, and now you're grown up, and you're supposed to be serious. So... It's a great little story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matthew says, yes, the co-op. Okay, I knew it. Um, we sign there like once a month. Wow, that's great. That's a lot. That's a lot. I I don't know like how she does it, but whenever I like do those signings, they're so fun. I love it, but I am like dead to the world after that. Like it's so exhausting because I mean, I'm sure Jasmine probably relates to this too because when you just kind of like work on your own day like every day just in your house quietly 
and then you suddenly are in the crowds with lots of people where you have to do a lot of talking it's like it i like i'm kind of what i guess i would call like a, an extroverted introvert so for me like I love people, but it takes me energy, like an ex expulsion of energy to do a lot of um, visiting, especially with people I don't know, you know, and I'm like being friendly and stuff. It's just like after I do Disney, I'm like, oh, my God, put a blanket over my head for a couple of days, <laughs> play video games for a couple of days until I'm ready to be human again and talk again. It's like, don't talk to me. <laughs> Okay, so now for this little area here, I kind of have her hair like going over her arm, but I haven't decided, like I didn't, it's a little bit ambiguous at the moment. So I'm just gonna paint right over the top and not worry about it because I can always do white after. So, and I'll probably do it not too heavy. So I can still see some of my kind of cool line work in there. But I'm just going to kind of hint of the arms underneath. That's a something I've kind of learned over the years is like not to be so married to my line work that I waste a lot of time being super, super tedious about like painting within the lines. Because not only does it not really help you in the end, especially when you're, you know, trying to uh, get forms that are underneath each other. It's just, it's, it's painstaking. And the great thing about acrylic is that you can always like cut and carve and layer. So you don't really have to worry about it too much. You know, you don't want to lose your, your, your hard earned transfer too much, but like, you know, I can still see that line underneath there. So if I want to add that white, um, the other thing I do sometimes too, if I, you know, if I want to keep it really clean, is I will I will do this I'll paint over areas and I might just like tape take a a, a, a wet q-tip or something and just wipe it back out again so paint the whole thing and then I can remove a little bit while it's wet but here I'm not too too bothered by it because I'm probably gonna just paint that in over the top and this is a pretty thin layer right now so it's not gonna add too much weird texture. Sometimes I am a bit concerned with that because I don't paint very um, like impasto as you would say. I don't paint with a lot of uh, raised texture. I like it to kind of be smooth. So until I start building up a lot of layers then I might not do as much overlapping but like at this stage it's it's fine. You know I don't I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Kind of lets you be a little bit more free in the early like blocking kind of stages. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Matthew, Jasmine is an insane introvert, so I understand. Well, you wouldn't get that much work done if you weren't in a way. Because, like, extroverted people usually tend to, like, get tired of being inside and being alone. So I think artists in general are a lot of times introverts because that's kind of, like, where we feel safe and happy is, like, alone and, and making things. Like, my mom always, like, thought there was something wrong with me because I didn't want to go out with friends. She's like, why don't you call a friend? I'm like, no. Like, I had one friend who I liked to come over and just hang out with me, but I just never was like, I let it go out with my girls and, like, whatever. Like, I just didn't really do that. I just liked, I was content. I was genuinely content making my little comic books and everything. And I think maybe parents are probably better at that now, like, you know, embracing a child's individual style. But, like, I don't know. Like, when I was a kid, my mom was like, you know, why don't you want to, like, call people? And she's very extroverted, so I think she was always kind of, like, you know, wanting me to make that effort. And she actually, I mean, it's funny that I say that as a negative when I was young, but now as an adult, she's forced me to do that. It's helped me, like, create my business and, like, really get to know people and make it so that I can go to Disney and be outgoing and enjoy it and not be like, ah, oh, I can't handle this. So practice always makes perfect, but... But also, you know, if you're an introvert like me, it's cool if once in a while you're like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to stay home, paint. You know, balance your life. Keep in touch with the people you really care about and friends and stuff. But if you're like, you know, my happy place is just being at home and making art, then I think that's cool too. We're not all the same, you know. Uh, yeah, so I think you guys had probably quite a few things for me. Um, if I missed it in the chat, just post it to me again. Because I'm so happy to have so many of you guys here. It's awesome. 
so Buddha Fox, have you seen the new trailers of The Addams Family and The Lion King? I'm so happy. I can't wait to watch. Lion King looks awesome. My only gripe, okay, my only gripe is I am a huge, huge Jeremy Irons fan, okay? I like, I own every audiobook that he's ever done, so I just listen to him, like, lull me to sleep. Um, and if you don't know who Jeremy Irons is, he is the original voice. My husband's probably jealous of that, actually. It's probably weird. Um, anyways, if you don't know who he is, he's the original voice of Scar in the animated version of The Lion King. And I just think he, he just does such great villain voice. Um, and... I love, I love that they brought back James Earl Jones for Mufasa because nobody else could do it. It's just so perfect. Uh, but the, the guy, I think, is it, I know who he is. Is it Chitwell who's doing Scar? He's a great actor. I do. I really like him. Um, but I just, I don't know. In the trailer, I was like, that's not scary enough for me. It wasn't evil enough for me. So we'll see. I'm going in with an open mind, though, because it does look really great. Um... The Addams Family, I don't really know about that. I think I saw, is it animated? I, th I thought I saw something that looked like a 3D animated thing. Or is it like actual actors? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> Matthew says, if you do not know who Jeremy Irons is, um, you can unfriend me right now. Thank you. Oh, Jeremy Irons. I don't know. I, I'm sure the man is like 70 something now, but he's just... He's just, I don't know, he's so attractive to me. I love his voice. It's just, it's everything. Yeah, please go check. He's in some really weird films, though. So I don't know if I'd recommend all of his films, but I think he's a fantastic actor. Um, but yeah, he's super British guy. You probably know, if you look him up, you would know who he is, probably. So go find out. Um, <laughs> my husband is constantly like, okay, so what is with you and Jeremy Irons? I mean, do we need to talk about this? I'm like... No, I mean, it's not going to happen, so don't worry about it. Uh, he's also was the voice of Spaceship Earth at Epcot. Oh, yeah? I haven't been there in so long that I probably didn't even realize that, but it makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay, uh, so yes. Oh, boy. Okay. Ah, get out of here. Uh, oh, so funny enough. So a starry-eyed seal. I think you're here, hopefully. I thought I saw you. Um, but she, she also said, um, are you, what are you most excited about the live action Lion King or Aladdin? I think I'm going to have to go with Lion King. Although I was kind of, I was one of those people that was laughing about the Will Smith genie, but I saw another trailer where he looked a lot better. Um, so I was like, why does he have to look like Will Smith? I kind of thought I was like, give him at least more chin. So he kind of had like the genie look. But I'm excited about it as well. Like, I think it looks good. I really like the casting for uh, Jasmine and Aladdin. I think they're adorable. Uh, again, I'm a little on the fence about Jafar, though. Like, I need that, like, villain. Like, I like he's too good looking. Have you seen this guy? I'm like, no, he needs to be, like, ugly, but kind of sexy. Like, that's, like, Jafar, you know, like, ugly, sexy. <laughs> so, yeah, that needs to happen, right? Um, so let's see, I don't, I'm trying to like, I promised people that I would answer some questions for them. Okay. Oodles of Glitter. Oh goodness. That must be a pain to clean up. Oodles of Glitter says, how long have you been painting? Um, I've been painting since art school. I mean, I dabbled a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, let's do the, the fingers. Uh, I dabbled a little bit in watercolors and you know, that kind of stuff beforehand, but I really didn't take painting classes or take it seriously in any way until art school. I was doing drawing before that. I love drawing. I use, you know, markers, colored pencils, kind of more primitive coloring materials until then. And then I really, I took, I don't even know how many oil painting classes, countless, countless painting figure, painting portraits, uh, painting so I was gonna say livestock not livestock still life still life um but I really fell in love with acrylics when I took a acrylic painting class as um uh, uh what's that word um elective it was an elective I took and I knew that the teacher his um his name was Kazu Sano and you should look him up because he was one of our masters and he he left us too young um, 
due to cancer. But I'm so, so glad that I got to take his course um, because he was amazing. And I fell in love with acrylic painting because of him. And if you don't know him off the bat, I can tell you that he did the original Return of the Jedi poster. So pretty badass. That was awesome. I just blew my bang. Um, yeah. Plus, he did lots of art for National Geographic. Again, I have too much water on there, damn it. Uh, anyway, he was cool. So he's really what got me into acrylic. And he's told me one of my favorite pieces of advice, too, because I often felt very self-conscious in art school, actually. Um, I always felt like I was behind. I felt like I was kind of like a wallflower. I was afraid to ask questions. I, I just felt like I'm not even good enough to be here. Why am I even here a lot of the times? And he he let us be very imaginative. So we had a live model. It was a, it was a six-hour class, a live model. But he said, just use the model as reference. You can do whatever you want. You know, you can create a scene. It doesn't have to be reality or literal. So I would always take the model and, and you know, have giant antlers on her or like have this like crazy kind of like fantastical stuff. I, I should bring this out. I think I showed my Patreon people some of my art school paintings. Anyway, so he came up to me and I was just kind of painting along and he said, you know, he's like, you're one of those artists that like, I would say, you can always improve your technique. You can always learn painting and get better at drawing and painting. He's like, but it's much harder to teach people to have interesting and creative ideas. And he's like, and you have that. And I was like, oh my God, that's like the best thing anyone had ever said to me. And because I, I never felt like my technique was that great. I still don't sometimes. I'm like, I'm not maybe the best painter, but I really do have fun coming up with ideas and, you know, getting better at executing them little by little is kind of the best that I can hope for, right? So thank you, Kazu. That was, that was awesome. You really like took me from someone who was discouraged to thinking, okay, you know, that's a good point. I'll just keep practicing if I keep getting inspired by something and do it a little bit better every time. So a little bit of a, of a tangent there for you. Uh, okay, if someone has, has to leave, or, Lexi, are you going? Okay, if you have to go, good night. Thank you for coming. I know it's, it's kind of late already. It's crazy. Uh, so let's see. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, God. How do I say this? Nama a WNC. Okay. I, I know. Okay. She has a really cute picture in her thumbnail. Okay. Oh, she, I'm going to give her a little shout out to her art. Look at, yay, this girl. Okay, I think you're a girl. See, I actually don't know what gender you are. So beautiful artwork. She has a question. And it is, are there any new and exciting projects? So yeah, so that's probably um, like something I could talk about now if you guys want to talk about the Barbie thing a little bit. Um, did any of you guys watch it? It's on Barbie's official YouTube channel if you want to go check it out. Uh, it's called Barbie Travel Mysteries, and I did episodes, so I did all of the artwork for episodes one, three, five, seven, and eight, and um, some of the art for six. So only, there was two other episodes that another artist um, helped out, but I did most of it. Um, and they're coming out weekly, episode one and two are out already. And it was, it was, like I said, it was a whirlwind kind of project. They had like insane deadlines that I'm not really used to working within. So that was, they're like, you can do that, right? And I'm like, yeah, okay, I think so. <laughs> I didn't sleep very much for like a month. So I was like, oh my God, I'm losing my mind. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so that was the last exciting project that I did. Um, and it was such a unique challenge, you guys, because like, I am not a landscape painter. And I was like, so why are you guys contacting me exactly? Um, but the art director said he saw my art. I don't, I think when he was just doing like style research and he was just like, I just really like this like kind of graphic feminine quality that you, you bring to your paintings. And then he's like, well, do you have any examples of landscape art? You know, other than the backgrounds of your paintings, I'm like, no. <laughs> Um, he's like, do you have more digital art? I'm like, no. <laughs> so anyway, it was kind of odd, but I was like, 
Uh, so I did a test uh, free of charge. I said, I'll, I'll do a test. And if you like this, then you can hire me. Um, if not, then, you know, it's okay if I'm not a good fit. Um, you might want to find an artist that does more like this. Um, and they they like the test a lot. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go for this. And um, I upgraded my old little, I used to have a little Wacom tablet, the, the one where you draw like this and your computer's up here. And my husband's like, okay, you need to get a Cintiq because if you're going to work this intensely, you need better equipment. So I found a great deal um, on a... Um, slightly older model of Cintiq. It's the 24, no, it's not the 24 inch. I don't know. It's over there, but, um, it's, I found it on eBay and it's great. And I really kind of took to it. It feels much more like traditional drawing, which was good for me since that's kind of like, uh, my comfort zone. And I never really took to the disconnect of your drawing hand over here and, you know, your computer up here. It just always felt so foreign and weird to me. So anyway, so I ended up doing somewhere around 50, no, something like 40 something backgrounds in about a month. So um, it was, it was uh, crazy, but it was fun and it was a really good challenge and it forced me to work quickly and make um, efficient decisions and it, it was actually like one giant design challenge because they would give me a real place in this case because Barbie's like traveling the world um, to real historic locations. So I'd have to take something like the Louvre or, um, you know, a locations around Paris and um, the Eiffel Tower and say, how, how do I simplify this into a cute design that, you know, feels like Barbie could be in the space, right? So I got better and better at it as I went along, honestly. I kind of like figured out what worked and what didn't. Ah, I'm losing my voice. Hmm. So yeah, so check it out. Um, if you guys are on my Patreon, I've showed you guys some behind the scenes of some of these backgrounds. And yeah, they turned out really cute. I'm really proud. I mean, it was kind of like, okay, I can't expect perfection from everyone because I don't have time. They want it turned in tomorrow. So I got to live with it unless they need changes. So that was kind of a good um, test for someone who's a bit of a perfectionist. And especially when you're a painter, sometimes you're like, oh, I can keep going. I can keep going. And it's not quite done. It's like, make a decision because you got to turn that in and just be like, well, that's good enough. You know, it might not be perfect, but um, I learned something on each one. So yeah, so check it out. Check out the uh, the show and let me know what you guys think. Have any of you watched it? I know it's like kind of for kids, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, Midnight Doll says, I could tell the background was yours for how crisp it was. Oh, well, thank you. I know. I kind of pride myself on crisp design sh shapes. Um, but it was interesting because I'm not, I'm not a vector artist. I don't work with vector selections, you know, if you guys know what that is. So I, I did a lot of selections, um, but I didn't do it like with the pen tool. I didn't do it in Adobe Illustrator. So I did uh, a lot of um, freehand drawing on the Cintiq and a lot of selections and things like that. I copied and pasted a lot of shapes. Like I make one window and then there's, you know, there's 50 windows. So all the windows. Um, it was also good for me to brush up on my perspective skills. That's for sure, because those were those were rusty and I was like, okay. I mean, they were like, they weren't sticklers about correctness. They were just like, you know, as long as it's could kind of feel like it has some depth. So it was definitely a very stylized kind of take on the scenes and everything. But yeah, it was really fun. And I think they're gonna have me work on season two. And my art director is a super nice guy. And he's like, hey, if you wanna be more involved with the production design, let me know. So I'm like, what? So I might get to go to LA and like, help them make sets and stuff, which would be so cool. That would be like my dream come true to go play with uh, Barbies and, and build sets or something. So I don't know, keep you guys posted on that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I know you guys asked me a couple of things. Uh, Black Sky says, okay, I watched your video again on Patreon where you couldn't tell us. And I was chuckling because there was Barbie behind you, a monster high doll on the shelf, and some of the Barbie show work on the wall. I know. I totally did that on purpose. <laughs> totally did on purpose. That's so obvious. Easter eggs, right? Uh, Creatures of Starlight says, was the Barbie thing the thing you posted that ad 
for working with you? Yes, it was. Um, so yeah, I had to, so that was kind of crazy, but, um, so the deadlines got so insane that they actually, they didn't plan perfectly for how, how many backgrounds they needed on short notice. So I, I, they needed me to like work through a weekend and, and I was like, my, I was having severe carpal tunnel and I was like, I, I can't work. I worked two weekends in a row without stopping. So I didn't take any days off. And I said, I have to take one weekend off. I can't do it. So they said, well, could, is there any artists you know that could do that? Who could um, come in short notice? So I was like, I know a bunch of you guys are creative on Instagram. So I'm going to just post an ad, like a little ad on Instagram. I'm like, are you a um, digital vector background artist? And I got a couple of really great portfolios right away. So I want to give uh, a major props and shout out to uh, Curtis, um, who stepped up and totally, he had to kind of like, I'm sure like emulate the ones that I did a little bit. So I think he did a great job. So he did, um, let's see, Curtis Gold Illustration, I think is his um, Instagram. I want to give him full credit because he just did great work on short notice. And um, I think our styles really like overlapped really well. So he did episode two and four. So episode two is out now. So those are Curtis's. So if you watch the most recent one, that's the work that he did. And I think it looks fantastic. So, so thank you to him. He came through in a pinch. Uh, so, okay. All right, if you, guys, if you guys need me, I'm just gonna keep painting along, but if you need me, just tag me with uh at miss Lani joy because it's a lot easier for me to jump into that oh my god it's 8 30 already okay we'll go for we'll go a little bit more because i'm so glad you guys are here uh shoot okay a couple I'll, I'll i'll squeeze a couple more of these questions in so bria bria moe bria moe 93 asked me if you can create your own manga or comic book what would you base it off of um that's actually that's a great question because that is something that i actually used to do all the time when I was um, a young person, I um, spent, I was obsessed with manga and um, some of my favorite series when I was a teenager was uh, Marmalade Boy and a series called Mars, which I just absolutely loved. And um, so those, and I watched a lot of Sailor Moon. Okay, I'm gonna go in and start a couple more layers on her face here so I'm zooming you guys in um yeah so I wanted to do something like that so I wrote I most of the comics that I did were very like sort of like real life drama like high school shoujo manga as they would refer to it um like teen stuff a lot of stuff that was based on my own reality um I liked that kind of aspect of um writing what I know and characters that were based on people I knew, um, boys I liked, um, things like that. Since I didn't do a whole lot of dating, so I'd write them into characters and stuff. Um, but now, gosh, I don't know, something, I, I like the idea always of, of human stories, right? Like things that you can relate to, but having like a fantastical element. And I love sci-fi and fantasy love Sailor Moon. I love heroic female characters. So I probably would maybe go somewhere down that, that route. I don't know if I'd have like the secret identity thing because I feel like that's been done a lot, but I don't know. Probably something. I went and saw Shazam the other day, which was so funny. You guys should see that. It's great. Um, I have a funny story for you though, because I felt for the first time recently, very, very old in front of a younger person. So I come out of the movie theater, and there's this cute girl working at the theater, and she was like, oh, I like your outfit. I was like, oh, thanks. She's like, how was the movie? I, I haven't seen Shazam yet. And I was like, oh, it's so fun. It's very, like, 80s, 90s action adventure comic movie, but, like, really inspired by Big, the movie Big. And she just looked at me like, she was, I think she said she was 21, and she's like, what? And I'm like, the movie Big, you know, with Tom Hanks, you know. And she's like, oh, well, I, I haven't seen that, but I'm sure my parents have. And I turned into grandma right in that moment. And I was like, oh, okay, well, bye. <laughs> Let me hobble away with my cane. 
<laughs> She's like, oh, I haven't seen that, but I'm sure my, my parents age. And I was like, oh, girl, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Mars, oh, fr uh, fr uh, Fusroa says, Mars, what a blast from the past. Ray and Kira was my teenage OTP. OTP, what's OTP mean? I don't know what that means, but... I think I agree because oh my god I was obsessed with that I was like oh I want a Ray I was I was so into him he was like he was so hot like for a manga character oh my god they rode motorcycles and he was like a badass and she was a shy artist okay I, it was good it's 15 volumes so I mean I just like reread it somewhat recently actually I'm like damn this is this is some really good like melodrama right here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you can still get that. That's one of my favorites. I was surprised they didn't make a animated. I think they had like a Korean live action of Mars. I don't know if you know about that old like um, TV show, but I don't think it ever was a, an anime, which I think is unfortunate. It wasn't. It wasn't fantasy. It was just um, like some suspense and like crime stuff, but like mostly like reality. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Shazam! Shaq be quaking. Okay. Now, Shazam with Shaq. Now, that ages you right there because, like, the young peoples, they don't know about Shazam with Shaq. I do. I know what it is. I'm talking about the new one, but yeah. I kind of have, like, a special place for that one, right? Lexi says, don't feel old. It makes me feel great. I laugh at all those whippersnappers. <laughs> Get off my lawn, kids. <laughs> Right? No, it's cool. I, I'm totally... You know what's funny, though? It's like, even when I was young, I had older cousins. So they always were, like, showing me, like, movies from the 80s. And, like, so I I already had, like, my point of reference was already older than I was. So I kind of, like, came from that a little bit. And I love movies. I've seen movies from all eras. So I feel like I kind of have more of a base than maybe, like, someone not from that. And... I don't know. It's kind of interesting, though. But I was like, I think, isn't that, like, Big is, like, a pretty well-known movie. I guess. I don't know. Uh, I can't. I, another funny story I like to tell is I, I used to work. This is, I mean, this is a long time ago, and honestly, there's no excuse for this. But I used to work retail in San Francisco, and there was this guy who was, uh, maybe, uh, uh my, my husband has a paper sign. Food? No water, so take it. Oh, I didn't think of that. Our sink is broken. Yes, please. Hey. Yeah. What are you gonna get? I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm wrapping up. I'm almost. I'm almost gone for two hours now. Okay. And I've barely done anything. Yeah, it's nice. I'm oh my to god. Some food oh yeah. Okay. 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 Uh. I'll, I'll just. Pick some oh, food. get. You could get those appetizers from that ramen place. That'd be good. I don't know. Pick Maybe. something. Yeah. Pick something. Okay. Right. <laughs> I see. I told you he was gonna stick his head in here and be like, "Where's food?" It, it totally happened. I predicted it. Okay. Ah, now I got some yucky fibers in here. I know. I'm. I'm gonna get better at, at doing more exciting stuff than just noodling around with one flat area. But and I do really like this color. I wish it would show up a little bit better. But yeah, I'm gonna stream again as soon as I can. I'm gonna be out of town next week taking a much needed vacation with my parents so that'll be fun uh to get some sun and then after that i'm just gonna like hardcore paint and hopefully stream and and hang out with you guys because man i miss this is so fun i really do i really do love this and i we got such a great turnout today and so thank you guys so much for like hanging out like okay what midnight doll says i'm only 23 so how the heck have you seen shazam Wait, Kazam? Oh, was it? Was it Kazam? I thought it was Shazam. Uh-oh, I'm not sure either. Westside Reaper says, wasn't it Kazam? I don't know. Was it Kazam or was it Shazam? Because I thought it was also Shazam. All right, somebody look this up, please. Someone someone tell us. <laughs> Midnight Doll says, they got little now, which is the reverse of the Tom Hanks movie. No! That's not real. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Starlight Seal says, I'm 26 and these teeny boppers yeet me into confusion. <laughs> what? 
What's yeet? Is that a typo? Oh my god. Yeah. It was Kazam. Okay. So why did I remember it as Shazam too? I don't know. I mean, it's a simple mistake to make, right? It sounds like pretty similar. Roller. All right. Okay. I know what we can do. Let's see. Just, just for fun. Let's put just a little eye color in because, man, I love doing that. Um, I'm thinking like an icy gray blue. What do you guys think of that? Let's do that while we finish here today. And um, I go find some food and go back and play uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider for the remainder of the evening because, oh my god, that game is everything I need from a Tomb Raider game. So I'm not going to go into this too much, but I'm an OG Tomb Raider player, as in I played the original Tomb Raider when it came out and I'm in 1990. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they've rebooted it several times and they um they did so they did tomb raider and then they did rise of the tomb raider and now they have uh shadow of the tomb raider and i got the reboot tomb raider and i was just i was not really that into it to be honest it they changed a lot of the dynamics and they wanted you to like it was more open worldy and they wanted you to do the upgrading and i was like i don't want to do that i don't want to do that and then they had a lot of um just too many like shootout action sequences and i'm like i want that weird creepy lonely exploration feeling that used to get with Tomb Raider. I used to have my younger sister sit in the room with me when I played Tomb Raider because it was so creepy and I'd get scared if like a boulder would come out or like a T-Rex or something. So I'd be like, come, come sit in the room with me and I'd play Tomb Raider. Um, but this new one, so it was on sale uh, for half off and my husband's like, hey, I got you this for your birthday and I love it. It's great. It's got the old school bits of Tomb Raider. I'm mixing my paint over here, that's why. Uh, you guys don't see what I'm doing um, but it also has some really great combat and um, really uh, clever clever challenging puzzles it's just great so anyway I'm really really into it right now okay Lexi says yeet is another word for throw or fling I don't I have never heard that word before <laughs> sorry Lexi have you played God of War no but I, I heard it was good um, so here's the thing, like, um, it is, think it's for, is it for PlayStation only? Cause I only have Xbox. Ooh, I like that color. Where's my little paper? I have a, um, I have a little paper here. That's like my color samples. What? I'm making a mess here. So, ooh, I like that, that color quite a bit for the eyes. Mm-hmm. 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 Just good. I'm getting it all over my hands, which is probably going to be on my white t-shirt that I actually like. I should be wearing my apron. Um, uh, Midnight Doll says, I watched a lot of movies due to my mom being a movie hoarder. She mainly, she mainly made me watch 80s films like The Breakfast Club and Girls Just Want to Have Fun and Dirty Dancing. Well, go mom. Go movie hoarder. Okay, so fun fact. I love The Breakfast Club. Um, and I can almost quote the entire movie. Okay. A little bit embarrassing factoid, but I love it. And um, my sister and I watched it dozens of times. I had a major crush on Judd Nelson in the movie. Even though he's like a pretty terrible person. <laughs> I don't know. There's something kind of hot about that. He's also like 40 in the movie. And he's supposed to be like 18. <laughs> he hasn't aged well, sadly. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so good. The dialogue in that movie, though, it's just like, it's so, I don't know, quintessential 80s and just, I don't know, it also has like realness to it. I always kind of appreciated that one more than something like 16 Candles sometimes, which was very, um, I don't know, kind of fakey. It's like, that would never happen. But I kind of like the idea of The Breakfast Club where it's like these different personality types ending up in the same... Um, in a, in a, you know, locked room situation. Young man, have you finished your paper? <laughs> okay. Uh, Creatures from Starlight. Roughly how long are you going to stream for? I'm actually going to get off, like, right now. Um, because I've been going since a little after 7. Um, so this has been kind of a, a, a little bit of a longer stream. I was just going to go for an hour and a half. But I gotta go because I haven't eaten dinner yet. Uh, but anyways, I am going to try to do it again soon and not so much time between uh, between movies. Uh, Black Sky says, Mannequin? Yeah, I love Mannequin. Oh my god. 
Oh, Desperately Seeking Susan. That was also one of my favorites um, with Madonna. Oh, my God. I love that movie. Mannequin had Kim Cattrall in it from Sex and the City. Oh, my God. That, dude, I really do know a lot about 80s movies. <laughs> and the guy from Pretty in the Pink. Yeah, okay. Anyways, love those. Love those movies. Anyways, we'll talk more about this next time. Let me see if there's anything real quick that I missed um, from guys that I can answer really quick. Uh okay we'll do just a couple more questions oh my god i for totally forgot to paint her head right there so that's something that we can do oh my god my mouth is getting dry from talking okay let's fill that in because that's going to be like a uh, metal crown chain there okay thomas thomas uh stavelli says what is your least favorite villain i don't have a least favorite villain because i love all villains and relate to them uh, no, just kidding. Least favorite villain? Uh, I mean, I could get really nerdy about it, but, um, you know, I I did not, I'll just say this. I didn't like what they did with Maleficent and the Angelina Jolie movie. There, I said it. I didn't like it. She looked amazing, but nothing else was good about it. So I guess that's kind of an answer. Uh, Kelsey Grew says, what kind of varnish do you use slash recommend? Oh, the age old varnish question. Um, I could give you a long answer or a short answer, but since I'm going to get off of here shortly, um, what I use right now is, uh, no, that's okay. This is, this is the, okay, now don't get confused. This is the varnish remover, but the bottle looks the same and it's too far away. So I use, um, Gamblin, uh, and it's called, um, Gamvar Picture Varnish. And I have found... Um, in, the, in their gloss that that is the most user-friendly varnish and it's pretty hard to mess it up um, it's it goes on almost like water clear very very thin um, and you actually use a technique where you take your brush and kind of like vigorously rub it back and forth to get it in all the nooks and crannies and then you make sure your painting is um, level and you leave it, you know, for 24 hours or more, and it, it level, it's like self-leveling, you know, you would want to use a thin coat. There's some great um, tutorials on this. Um, I have a varnish tutorial on my Patreon, so if you join my Patreon, you can watch my full varnish tutorial where I talk about isolation coats and other techniques that you need to know, um, but that's the short answer. The long answer is I've, I've fought varnish a lot. I've um, f been frustrated with it for many years because I sometimes I was like, well, I don't know if I want it like super high gloss, but I'm actually kind of like learning to embrace gloss more because it makes my colors so vibrant because I used to be like, I don't know, maybe it's too reflective. Anyways, feel free to experiment. I mean, if, to get what you want, but be kind to yourself. Don't do it on your favorite best painting. Do it on a practice board before you commit because there is some room for trial and error there. Um, and the great thing about the Gam the Gamvar picture varnish is this is the remover, Gamsol, which is just like water as well. And it's you don't have to use turpentines or um, other icky chemicals to remove it, like paint thinners. Um, it comes off really easy. So if you make a mistake or you get a big hair in there or something, you can easily take it off gently with the Gamsol and do it over again because um, I did that once on a painting where my painting wasn't quite level so it pooled a little bit on one side so the the varnish was visibly thicker in one area and thinner on another and I'm like oops so I just I took it off with the gamsol and I did it again and and fixed it all right uh, I think that's it for uh, Instagram hopefully so thank you guys for your questions from Instagram hopefully you can check out this stream after the fact um, thank you guys so, so much for hanging with me. Um, I want to, um, talk to you guys more about this. Um, Lexi has a says, speaking of gambling, I'm still stuck on my Frida painting. I'm going to start it again once <laughs> it starts getting warmer, so it'll dry faster. Uh, yeah. So yeah, experiment with that and, uh, see if you, if you like that. It's, it's, it's pretty user friendly, honestly, which is great for me because some some varnish techniques I'm like, oh my god, they have like wax varnish, like that you like rub on like a wax. I, I don't know, all kinds of different techniques. 
Okay, guys. Well, my mouth is tired and my stomach is hungry. So anyways, hey, now she has some eyes. See, it kind of just like brings life already. Thank you so much again for, for hanging out with me, you guys. I will post the stream on YouTube after the fact if you missed it. Um, yeah, and I hope to stream again soon. Make sure you're following me here on Twitch so that you get an alert to your email when I'm going live. And yeah, so that's it for me today. And I hope to see you guys again really soon and post some more updates on this one. Uh, in the meantime, catch me on Instagram and I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a good evening. Um, do some art. Okay. I'm going now. Bye.